Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is now 5.30 p.m. Um, meeting was duly posted, and we are going to begin with the invocation. Uh, Commissioner Puente, will you please lead us? I'd like to start off with one of my favorite verses in the Bible uh, from John 14, the way, the truth, and the life. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. In your Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Pledge of allegiance. We will go to citizen communication. Amanda, do we have anyone signed up? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we have we have Mr. Alejo Mesa, um, address 119 North uh, Nueces Park Lane, and he would like to be called. Is Mr. Mesa in the audience? Would you step up, sir, to the podium? Thank you. Please uh, state your name and address. Hi, it's, I'm uh, Alejo Mesa, uh, 119 North Nuestas Park Lane, Harangen, Texas. And uh, I would like to speak about the, our local ordinances regarding fowl and livestock. Um, I would like to take consideration the past hardships that we've been experiencing here in Harlingen due to the pandemic and now to, due to inflation. And I would like to reinforce uh, you know, our people's way to um, put food on the table, you know, Increase the, our current amount of 20 chickens or other fowl to 50 chickens if possible. And then also to remove the, the status of a prohibited of small livestock to restrict it, to go alongside with the live, or to go alongside the chickens as well with a limit of uh, five if possible. Now I believe this would uh, supplement our local food sources, promote self-sufficiency and also increase the emotional well-being of the people, being able to feel the security that we're not have to worry about higher gas prices or the cost of uh, foods going up at HEB or other local stores. And uh, also, this would um, allow for keeping up with the current times and any future issues that we might have. And uh, I'd like to take consideration uh, adjusting those as you see fit. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next one is Robert Garcia, 902 South Palm Court Drive, and he would uh, like to speak on municipal court update. Uh, can I can I hand these to some Are you people? Read all of those? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind of a visual. You don't have any warrants, right? <laughs> some people probably got warrants in here. <laughs> yeah, if you could just uh, give these out. I gave uh, Mr. Morales. Already warned just right now, but yeah. and here this these are small. <laughs> I'm not going to pass these out because they, you know, I didn't redact them, but I did redact those. Anyways, I'm Judge Bobby Garcia from the Harlan Municipal Court. Um, it's kind of ironic. I was prepared to say a little speech, and then I just got through the training today. We had it all day, and ironically, I was going to talk about bonds, and then the training is about the new Senate bill. Six, which pertains to judges' certification for setting bonds. So uh, the new rule is no judge can set a bond unless they take the certification. And uh, it's a long certification. I just got done with it today. But um, I wanted to address the issue of setting bonds. Um, there have been many uh, reforms that have been going on regarding the bail system. Uh, there are a lot of federal lawsuits. I attached some at the end. There's also even an incident where a lady passed away in the jail because she couldn't make her bond. 
And um, that is why those federal lawsuits are happening in Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Galveston, and I think even Hidalgo County, but there's many more cities being sued for excessive bonds. Read all those lawsuits that I provided you. Now these are the cases from the district attorney's office. All these cases. These are state's motions to dismiss. Now, I gave you some examples of some people in there. They were charged with a crime, $75,000, $50,000 bonds, $30,000 bonds. All those cases were dismissed. These are, I've only been here two years. These are all states' motions to dismiss. Engaging in organized criminal activity, assault, family violence, endangering a child, injury to the elderly, indecency with a child. These are serious cases that the DA is dismissing. However, the judges are being critiqued about the bonds that we are setting at the municipal court. Now, I only set about 45% of the bonds, so there are four judges. And uh, even though I am the presiding judge, the bonds that I set are set with an attorney present, a defense lawyer, and a prosecutor. And I always go by the recommendations of the defense lawyer and the prosecutor about 99% of the time. They get their affidavits for any arrest at 7.15 in the morning, then we get them and we discuss probable cause and we discuss bonds. And then I go with the recommendations of what the, the uh, attorneys are stating. Before I got here, they used to use a post-it. Now a post-it from the judges means, here's a post-it, here's a police report, fix it. A judge cannot be fixing police reports. I created the form as soon as I got here because I knew that was a big issue. Well, it's created enemies in the police department because they don't like to be told what to do. When you're used to not having a single police report rejected, you're going to create enemies. When you're setting PR bonds, you're going to create enemies with the bond companies. Now, the DA is problematic because they should not be communicating with the city manager. That is against bar rules. I'm done. If you want to ask me any more questions, I don't know how it works, but I just want, I did send some emails, uh, but I wanted to red flag some of these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a, uh, okay. a question on here, and, I, and I'm, I apologize if I didn't catch it initially. You said you just completed a training? Yes, the judges, Senate Bill 6 requires that any judge to, that is setting bonds must go through the 16-hour training. And uh, we went through the, we had this brought up, it was in April 1st, it, went, it was implemented, and this was the date that the training was set. Okay. So no judge can set a bond unless they've received that training. And uh, yeah, it was a very long training. So it's kind of a weird time to be changing judges, but I mean, I understand, you know, I know bond companies are probably upset police officers don't want to be told Sir, that their uh, police uh, reports excuse, excuse me okay uh, this is public comment yeah. and i just advise the city commission not yeah. to respond at all uh the right. judge is making giving giving this yes. as a public comment and and we can have a discussion in a different forum if he wants to talk about some of these issues yes that's exactly right i just wanted to make sure i understood on on the on the training part but thank you for yes. for bringing this to us to our attention i would just like to say one thing the attorneys that have been working at the prosecutors are great i love them i love working with them they've been really good thank you thank you so much okay the next person is jerry prepershaw would you like to be called oh is he here is no like to be called during the meeting no I guess um, his comments was I would like to concentrate on the allocation of funding from CDBG he doesn't want to be called and I don't think he's present so I just read his, his comment thank you anyone else uh, yes ma'am the next one is Ron Lozano 2410 Riverside Drive and would like to speak on item number five well, uh, actually, I had a discussion with uh, the proponent of that. Can we just state your name and address again, please? Again? That's yes. the same as what you just said, yes. Ron Lozano, 2410 Riverside Drive. Thank you. I totally disagree with the alert you just got from the city attorney. He cannot find any basis in Texas law for what he just stated. And that is unbecoming for America because last night we had an election. Uh, at the federal level, in some parts of the state at the state level, and of course here, municipal level. 
and elections have consequences. So one of the items on some of this rapid fire, as uh, Judge Garcia just mentioned, consent agenda, talks to the airport board. One of the proposals is if someone has ever been removed from a board. Uh, when we had in-depth discussions, sometimes Mayor Boswell and I could uh, reach an accord. And some of the pernicious effect of that ridiculous proposal, because it discounts the judge's function, an appellate function of America, somebody could be exonerated, but in Harlingen, if a vindictive individual has removed you from a board, that automatically, given the current proposal, and you put it on consent agenda of all places, totally un-American. And, and that's why some of the candidacies that we have, of people that are running, are so dismal. Because we come up with proposals as ridiculous as, as that one. So hopefully you all can address that and realize that it's going to be constitutionally challenged. You cannot uh, dismiss our appellate system so easily. Thank you. Thank you. We have Desi Martinez. Desi Martinez, uh, 1806 Haverford Boulevard. Uh, council members, I, I'm here because there's an urgent need for responsible action in our community and it's children, children K to 12 to regain the confidence of safe schools and neighborhoods. That is the priority <laughs> today. I'm talking about, and all respect to the advisory committee of CDBG, CDBG funds come from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to assist with this type of urban need. We cannot wait another year. It needs to start this summer. This is your first budget you're going to work on in detail for your whole budget of your $100 million, more or less, you're going to have. So we li I'd like to ask that you please consider not lights for Victor Park, for uh, Victor Park, uh, what do they call it, flag football, et cetera, but for CDBG revitalization and safety around schools and neighborhoods. The city is responsible from a sidewalk into the neighborhoods. The CDBG funds makes it eligible for the low income areas that tar funds are targeted in there. Your police department knows what the conditions of those areas of illicit illicit activities, et cetera. But to work together with the city, 911, and the schools, et cetera, and AP, for example, put monitoring cameras on the AP poles and monitor those, and 911 and the police department can work a day and night program. But the thing is, those are just one example. It's cleaning knowledge with the public works. We gotta come together. The CDBG offer today is a standard a uh, business as usual program that they've been doing and that they ask the departments and they bring in their Christmas list y vamos a trabajar. That's not the way we do these things with CDBG. Being a former director of CDBG for our Metro City, I know. So please consider that uh, item of 234,000 re be relocated to neighborhood revitalization and school safety. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have the last one is Raymond Reyes. Is he in the audience? Thank you. Uh, Raymond Reyes, 706 Nantucket Drive uh, in Harlingen. So uh, I think um, there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Like always, it's always a work in progress, like I always uh, say. Uh, but hopefully everybody can get on the same page and work towards making a positive change uh, for Harlingen and more importantly for the citizens. There's a lot of different ways that, that things can be addressed and taken, uh, uh, taken care of. Not everybody's gonna agree, but if we've tried certain methods and they haven't worked, then you're gonna to wanna to try other methods. Uh, again, it's always a, a work in progress. 
Uh, school safety, like the gentleman mentioned, is, is a big deal. I myself as an analyst and the kind of work that I do have looked at, at things that have actually worked in, in other countries. Um, and I always go back to Israel that's surrounded by all these terrorists and things, and but yet you never hear uh, school shootings and things of that nature. Uh, maybe that could be something that, that can looked at and maybe you know considered implementation on some aspects. But um, I think more importantly as well, there needs to be oversight of all the directors or people in charge of all these departments to make sure everything's running as efficiently as possible. Uh, certain things that have, have been brought to light to myself uh, that hopefully are getting addressed uh, and resolved. And uh, all we just need to, to pay is attention to detail like they was constantly drilled in me in the military. Uh, so I, I think harlingen has got a very bright future. There's a lot of innovation that, that hopefully is going to be coming to Harlingen very soon uh, with a lot of positive changes, including I'm so glad that Rio Fest is coming back. Uh, that, that's uh, something I've been harping on for a long time. But I think as long as we keep making progress in the right direction, uh, good things will come. It just takes time, but to constantly keep moving forward in a positive light. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor, City Commissioners, for your time. Uh, that's it. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Mr. Reyes, and your comments. I have no more uh, citizens communication. Great. Okay, so we'll go on to item number one, presentation of recognition awards. And the first one is the Harlingen High School South Lady Hawks track team. <coughs> to congratulate you guys because for getting this championship, I know that's a lot of hard work and you guys are yeah. being recognized yeah. for the hard work that you do. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Come back. 
you. Sorry. Sorry. Don't move. Yeah. One,
<laughs> I'll have to stand in front. <laughs> you guys are really tall. Uh, <laughs> hey, there was good representation of both. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks again, boys and girls. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> item number two is approval of minutes. Um, this is the regular city commission minutes of April 6, 2022. Are there any uh, changes or addition to the minutes? Do you have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have item number three, the consent agenda. We have items 3A through E. Mayor, if I may at this time, can I uh, remove item uh, 3E uh, just to add for discussion to ask a couple of questions? Okay. Which one's this? The last one. Oh. That it, and it's yours? Is that? Oh, it has something to do with that. Okay. So do you need to do a motion to move? Well, we'll to remove to move that out no, of the consent agenda? We just agenda? what we'll do I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda three A through through three D. Okay. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. And so is anyone here from Public Works? Uh, Craig is going to address oh, any issues. Okay. I'll, I'll pinch it. Craig okay. Cook, Assistant <laughs> City Manager. Just a real quick question. Uh, I had discussed with uh, Mr. Rodriguez, and uh, Section 4, the last sentence, it still shows the language. The last sentence says no two axle trailers will be allowed. We were supposed to strike that. Has that been taken out? It has, and there's uh, the two fees of uh, $95, I believe, for uh, double axle trailers. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, because on here, it, it doesn't show that it's been removed. So that's all I, that's the only concern I have. I, I remember seeing it in a version I saw, so I'll, okay. I'll, I'll confirm that. Pass the motion with the yeah. understanding of the language? Yeah. So yeah we'll, we'll, we'll take that language out. Okay. So we'll go ahead and just uh, approve uh, consent agenda item number 3E. Yes. There we go. Okay. I have a question for the lawyer. Um, this affects Mr. Puente's roofing business. And he spoke about that specifically in the last meeting, and he's speaking on it now. Is that a conflict of interest? Um, no. He, has Mr. Puente recused himself? Has Commissioner Puente recused himself? No, he's here. No, but uh, no, it's not a conflict of interest. Okay, thank this, you. this is an ordinance that was placed even before I was on the commission. And I not only speak on behalf of my company, but this was more uh, geared towards the local businesses that were going to be affected by this. And so obviously that's why I had brought it up. So there's, there's no conflict of interest. It's actually, it's going to cost me more, but we just wanted to make sure that we were being fair to all other contractors, especially the ones who live here in Harlingen, 
that they weren't going to be uh, uh, punished, so to speak. So. Is there any other discussion? Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, we need to make a motion. Okay. You, um, do we have a second? We did have the motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have item number four, consideration and possible action for the city of Harlingen to have a booth at the Texas Municipal League Conference during the week of October 5, 2022 in San Antonio, Texas. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Thank you for having me here tonight. The city of Harlingen has had a booth at the Texas Municipal League Conference. This year it's being held in San Antonio for the past six years. During this conference, we give out a promotional information on the city of Harlingen to around 3,000 attendees. Some of those are including the people that are exhibitors at the booth themselves that they have an exhibit. And um, we do have a booth already purchased for this 2022 conference and uh, we pay twelve hundred dollars for the booth so um, a lot of the city administration attend all the elected officials attend and various department heads attend to go to the conference during this week i have a a few questions yes ma'am you said for the last six years yes you participated we, we didn't have a booth there in 2021 oh, because tml yeah. was canceled 20 yes i'm sorry it was canceled we were supposed to go to the gaylord texan <laughs> we had already purchased a booth as well but it was canceled during that during the pandemic and have there been any other cities represented no ma'am we are the only city administration or city that's represented most of the booths that are at the event are like street sweepers if you wanted to buy one factors you can get lights you can get christmas decorations so if you ever wanted to build a city that's where you would go get everything okay and um i noticed on here that um on the summary that the promotional items that are handed out at the event are a total of five thousand dollars Yes, well, we purchased that amount of, amount of promotional items that we hand out during the year for any, anybody in the city, basically, that hands out promotional items. We provide that for any department that would require them, but we take them to the conference to hand out. We don't hand out all $5,000 worth. Like I said, some of it comes back to, to the city itself, but we do hand out a large portion of it, along with literature, like brochures of all of our attractions and our brochures. And that includes printing of those brochures, et cetera. And this is in San Antonio? Yes, ma'am. Every uh, year it changes in a city throughout the state of Texas. Yeah, now, there aren't any cities in South Texas that are represented, but there are cities throughout the state of Texas that do have yeah. a booth there. Uh, I think Bastrop has had one in the past. Um, there is a port city that has had one. So there are some cities that do attend, but none from South Texas. Okay. Mayor, I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, on that same summary, it shows here that they are, sh that I guess the promotional items are shipped, costing yes. us $2,000. Is well, there? It just, it depends on the weight of the product <clears throat> that we're sending. So if we're sending like the red notebooks that you have seen, if we're sending like 10 boxes of that, they charge us to send those boxes to San Antonio and anything that we have left over would be mailed back. That is an approximation amount because depending on the, the length of, or how far the, conferences when it's in dallas of course it's going to cost us maybe in the two thousand dollars if it's in san antonio it's going to cost us closer to a thousand dollars so the that that range price range does change a little bit depending on where the conference is why wouldn't we use to make our, our trucks and our employees and our employees um anybody that goes to the event they take their own personal vehicle or they rent a vehicle um to go to the event but they're the conference itself has a company that we ship it through but and they works bring has, excuse well, me but public works has brand new trucks that, that no i yes sir i understand that C the, the commissioner amount of if boxes, i could just interject if yeah. you take your own vehicle and drop it off they only give you 15 minutes to offload yeah. and then you've got to take it inside if you use this company they'll actually put it in front of your booth um and then you just take it off and put it on your table so it's a lot easier so if we because i was going to do that one time using yeah. my van and, and when i found that out i said no there's, I'm not, I'm not um, if we take around 20 boxes of promotional items, my department is myself and another coworker. So we would have to get to the loading dock at a certain time, have 15 minutes to unload 15 to 20 boxes that probably weigh 30 pounds, take them to our booth in a 
exhibit hall that holds around uh, 385 exhibitors. So you could be at one end of the football field or the other, and then you have to rush back and move your car. So for us and the exact personnel that manned the booth, it's not an availability. So the fee may be less. The if fee, it, it will be less if we choose uh, to send less items. Okay, thanks. So um, a question that I have is, this is, this conference is not open to the public, right? Uh, yes, you can sign up, you can attend, the public can attend, uh, they do, the conference is two parts. There is classes for people that are elected officials and city administration and department heads, and there's also an exhibit hall that's open to the public. They do have to purchase a, um, a day pass for the exhibit hall, and they're able to go in. Okay. How does the, how does this, because it's mainly for, I mean, I'm looking at, at what you submitted. It's mainly for elected officials or appointed officials in mm -hmm. government bodies. How does... I'm trying to understand how City of Harlingen being there promotes tourism. Can you get me there? Um, so for the past five years, like I've said, we, we go and it really is about connecting with all the elected officials and the city governments, local city governments that, are, that attend the event. The more information that we can give them, they can, can like follow through to their constituents as well. So I do uh, sometimes a tour for the um, the travel and tourism centers. So all the travel and tourism centers around the state, they go to each one and they learn about each travel and tourism information. The more information I give them, the more than they can give to others. This is basically what we, is another way to get to people's, inf information directly to people that are elected officials in cities around the state of Texas. So that is wh where we had come so in, in through the, the city of Harlingen. Um, can you share some of the connections you've made in how uh, that's benefited the city? Uh, the most connections that we've made throughout the city is, like I said, just through the elected officials that we're giving them information of what we have to offer in the city, what attractions we have, what flights we have, and how, why but they I come said, down. But my question more specifically, like you're saying, you're, 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 promoting, you're promoting the city. Has any of those, you know, looked at the convention center? Or, yeah, or I, don't, I do not have a direct For return. Any, no, any sir. No, sir. Are there? So what have you seen a direct benefit of being uh, there for this talk? Besides just informing all the 3,000 attendees yeah, I mean, about the city. Yes. The, the, no, I do not have any concrete evidence that somebody came down to Harlingen from that. And I have a question. The money that you spent on this, could it, say, for example, we were to say no um, because this money could... Because like I was seeing what you were posting about like how much it was going to cost and stuff, yes, and it, it ranged. Again, I know now you said that's the five thousand dollars promotional. Some of it is for throughout the year and stuff. Yes. Yeah. But um, could some of that money, instead of spending it on going to the um, opening of a booth there, could we use that more to like say opening up a festival? Because I think you do a great job. Like you had the blues on the hill. Yes. Sir. And you did a fantastic job. And I, and honestly, me personally, I would like to see more of that because I think that has more of a direct impact on the people of Harlingen than us having a booth. Because I was checking the listings online um, for the, you can look online and it'll, it'll give you all the um, exhibitors from last year. And then I was looking through every single one of them and the city of Harlingen was the only one that, had, that exhibited last year. And I just think that we could use this money better to say have another festival for say, cause we have the blues in the hill, maybe a, you know, country on the hill or Tejano or seventies mm -hmm. and eighties or something like that. Because I, I think that really is something that, I mean, when I was there and, and, and you know, I was, you were there too. And, and I could tell that the people really enjoy that. And I think that's what people in Harlingen want. They want more activities that they can go to. So I think that the money would be better spent on, you know, promoting something and letting you do your magic when you do these things like the Freedom Fest and the, on the Blues on the Hill. We, we, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, I can. I can do another concert, especially Blues on the Hill. They're fairly simple for us to put together. So, like, I have a question. Like, say, yes, like Blues on the Hill. Like, how much must, was that more or less? This past one was eight thousand dollars. Okay, so like more or less, like the money but we spent. It, the most money is spent on the artist. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Do, do you so want to make I that think motion? That 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 would be that would be great because that would bring people into the city of Harland. And if we have a, a, a band that is popular yeah, amongst people I to understand. come and sit, you know stay at the hotels and, mm -hmm. and hopefully eat and shop and all that good stuff. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do, like I said, we already purchased the booth. Uh, it's twelve hundred dollars. We can get fifty percent back if we cancel before July eighth. So we made the deadline for that. Okay. Yeah, to me, that's fine. We're not. We're not going to pay for the uh, your hotel stay, the per diem, and everything else. So losing six hundred bucks, no biggie, because you'll reinvest it in the direct impact. Yes, sir. And that will be. Well, the. Yes. The, the directors still go. Like, I'm assuming you're still going to go to. Yeah, know. I could still go to the, the conference. Yeah, my yes, thing was sir. just the. Um, she wouldn't need to take all the yeah, staff, just, though. Yeah, my exactly. Staff. My thing was just the booth because yeah. I want to spend that more on stuff for us. Right. We, we that that's kind of, that's how I feel as well. I just want to make sure that you, it, we don't. We're not giving all our promotional items to other elected officials from other cities that are probably going to just toss them and they're not going to promote us. We'd rather give that to people that, I understand. you know. Want yeah, I, want to, to, to I want to see kids in my high school with the city of orange and hat. Like, yes. Yes. I, yes. I did order some new ones, so they should be coming. <laughs> and and I and I did hear that there is going to be some kind of um, mountain bike type race that's coming to to Harlingen. Uh, there, the mountain bike uh, track that is being built right now. They are trying to build a. I, I guess it's it is a race, or maybe it's just like a. I think there's a ra and I think that is you know a way maybe those we could utilize those, those funds to that I can I can um, we, we can if, uh, as long as we can attract people in our hotels we can spend it on, right. on that because yeah. the closest one I think for that would be San Antonio and we can we can talk yes later yeah. we, we you know welcome that we are happy that you want to come but I don't think that um, at least I think that's how we feel that the, the the promotional items aren't really necessary nor the nor the booth in this particular conference in this conference no I understand and it that's why we bring that to you guys thank you so we need, a motion. need to make a so make a motion to deny so a motion to approve and then you oppose yeah <laughs> oh say it again I'm sorry I'm deaf say it again. so is there a motion to oh, motion second okay all those in favor say aye a motion, a motion. for what to what was the motion to approve this, we're making a motion to deny a booth at the at the TML conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it, so it's a motion to, to deny. The Most, booth. Motion no. to deny. No the booth. It's a motion to approve, but we deny it by saying voting no. Oh. Yeah, that way they can yeah, use it for something will. else. Mark. Motion. You're you're moving to deny. So it's moving to. You can qualify it. But you're moving to deny the booth. You're so not moving to approve. Yeah. Right. So, move, so motion, motion to deny. deny. Motion to deny the booth at TML. Second. All those in favor of denying the motion? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, consideration and possible action to adopt a new ordinance, section 46-167 to chapter 46, article four of the code of ordinances to prohibit stopping, standing, or parking of a vehicle to improve public safety consistent with Texas Transportation Code, section 545.302. Mr. Cook. Craig Cook, Assistant City Manager. I'll field any questions you have. Um, you want to explain exactly what this this will do, Craig? This is actually going to uh, enforce some of the yellow lines that we've already painted along. In the past, that, that's right, sir. In in the past, the commission has approved specific uh, no parking areas uh, along streets, uh, at corners, and such. Uh, this is an attempt to kind of collect all of that and give some authority, some weight to the yellow painted curves that you see around town that signify no parking. Um, there was a citizen in District 5 that complained about uh, parking around South High School, not on the property, but around it on uh, Haverford. And I've provided some pictures. That particular street has a carve out for parking on one side of the street. And people were parking in the, within the carve out, but they were also parking outside of it, 
congesting the traffic yeah. lanes. And so we would paint those outer areas yellow. Uh, there's other pictures where they're parked right at the stop sign or a yield sign specifically. Uh, we would paint those areas too. Um, so this, the first, the first intent is to get us in accordance with the transportation code. Most of us know you can't park in front of a fire hydrant, but we, we need to codify that. Um, and then these specific areas in and around South High. This is something that I asked Craig to look into because I did, like Craig mentioned, I did have a, a resident from my district that reached out to me because, and I see it every day because I, I work at South and I go and we have students that, you know, they bring their cars and they, they don't want to park on, on school property because they have to have insurance and they have to pay, uh, get a permit and all that. So what they do is they park on the sides and, and they basically, it's, it's bad. So, so, but hold on, let me, let me ask you a question. What's up? Because you work there. Is the school charging a permit? For the kids to, to park? Anything? You know what? That's a good question. And, 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 and I get mine free, so I don't know. I'm sorry? <laughs> I was like, I get mine free, so oh, I, well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't the, know. The point is, is if they have a specific uh, parking area, then the school also needs to enforce uh, that, that they park on, on, on property. Oh, no. Like, in, inside, I mean, they can, they, they, they um, regulate the, the parking inside the school grounds on school property, but they don't have any authority to say, hey, you can't park on the, on the side of the public street right. or anything like that. But, but, I've seen like at North, right? Again, remember that's North. Yes. I, north. And the, 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 the whole parking lot. Not north. Yeah. They don't. They don't use parking. I mean, they, they actually cut it off, and the parking lot that was supposed to be for for kids is now used either for the band or for some other function, right? Uh, so uh, we need to. I think I would ask the city to find out. You know, we, we, can, we can. Are they using other allotted parking spaces, or is your parking lot? Uh, have, is it being repurposed, causing that kind of congestion? Because it may, it may be the fact that they don't want to buy a permit, but it also may be there's no parking. There's not, that's a lot of kids on campus. I know for South, at least, they do have student parking, and students are allowed to park there. And stuff, but like you have to remember at the same time, there's tons and tons of students, so and not everyone, there's not going to be enough room for all the cars. Because I know they. But, but, is, but is South, the question is, is South using all of the way it was constructed and it was designed? All their asphalt is it being used for parking or are they repurposing something from what i've seen um yes it's all being used for parking either staff parking or bus parking or student parking yes and then the only time they really do the kind of functions you're saying like for band and stuff like that is either real early in the morning or real late like after you know after hours and i, and I will say i do intend to go speak with someone <laughs> at the school this summer uh before we start painting uh, curbs so that they know what that means uh, so that next fall, everybody will know, fair, you know, fair, fair notice. And this also cover, covers other important stuff, right? Like the, um, in front of parking in front of a private driveway. Yes. Yes. Intersections. Intersections, yield things. signs, stop signs, the, the things that you kind of intuitively know, but, <clears throat> but we want to make it more clear. <laughs> the motion for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number six, uh, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request from residential single family district to general retail district for 30.28 acres out of a portion of block 12, store place subdivision, survey 139, all of block 7, and a portion of block 8, seven, Village subdivision located along the north side of U.S. Expressway 83 between Family and Altas Palmas Road. Applicant is uh, Mariana Garcia of, of Natasha Del Mayor City Commission, good evening. Uh, this uh, project was discu discussed uh, briefly two weeks ago. There was an abandonment of a right of way easement over here uh, that was approved. Uh, now, what's coming before you is the rezoning of the property. Uh, most of the property from single family residential to general retail district to allow this uh, large commercial project to happen. This is along the, ex along the north side of the Expressway 83 between Altas Palmas, Road, Altas Palmas Road over here and Tam Lane over here. Uh, so the, the project covers this whole area for this large commercial development uh, in the works. Part of the property is already zoned general retail district along the frontage road and here. <coughs> But a, a large portion is owned single family on Altas Palmas and in a big section uh, on next east of Tam Lane 
that is part of this uh, big project. This is the aerial <coughs> photograph of, of the property. Uh, I think Alo Aloe Vera used to be located here. There are some warehouses that are located on, on Expressway that have been abandoned. All of these buildings are now abandoned to, um, because the, this developer purchased uh, this entire property for this project. And that's a picture of the project, of the property from Tam Lane, looking east. And that's uh, looking on Tam Lane, looking north. In the comprehensive plan, it calls for the entire property as an employment uh, generator, uh, uh, as an employment center. So this uh, zoning is in line with the comprehensive plan. Uh, we did receive a petition, a petition in opposition. I, I believe a copy of the petition was placed in you, in your space uh, from property owners in the Los Arboles uh, Estates uh, fa uh, Phase Two subdivision. Uh, their concern is that their property taxes uh, could go up and then traffic along time lane, uh, traffic concerns. Ten people signed the petition, and this map. All the petitioners are from the from this subdivision, which is Los Arboles. The state's phase two, uh, some, some of the petitioners from the notification area and then some from outside the notification area. And so the petitioners uh, make up 3% of the total notification area. So that's the calculation that shows that it's 3% of the total uh, notification area. Because uh, the petition was submitted, but no one showed up to the public hearing. So that's, uh, that's why I'm, I'm reporting that at the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing, uh, nobody showed up in opposition. Uh, but we did get the petition that that's something that you can uh, consider. I did reach out to, because this is in my district, so um, I had one, one of my constituents reached out to me, and I did speak to them, and I called... Um, Javier earlier today because their main concern is their is the, the taxes they they were under the uh, the assumption that if it if it switched over to general retail that their proper taxes would automatically go up and then after I reached out to um, to Javier and, and you know he, he did a great job and explained to me about how <clears throat> how that just allows you know the development to to get built there and that won't really have an effect on the on the taxes unless you know the construction but from what I understand he told me it's going to be a car dealership correct correct it's going to be a car dealership that's built there so. Um, in other words, ta that, that taxes is not really an issue unless some of the homes start selling for a higher price and stuff like that. And I spoke to the constituent and they understood. Um, they were just under the impression that by changing it, the zoning, that their taxes were automatically going to go up. And once I explained to them that that's not the case, um, they, they were fine with it because, well, you know, the main thing was the taxes. So I'm good with it. I need a... I need to make sure that I understand this. What's the difference between the high density residential and the low density residential, which is where this came from, where uh, Los Arboles? <clears throat> my, my specifically, are they in a flooding zone or will they be flooded because we're going to uh, do a car dealership and water's going to run to the lowest place and they're going to get hurt? They have to go through the sub after they get the zoning. If the zoning goes through, they have to go through the subdivision process, and they will have to comply with the 50-year uh, storm detention. So that's your the new guide was adopted a few a few months Correct. ago to change it from a 25-year storm to a 50-year storm. So this development will have to comply you, with you, the 50-year storm. It's actually going to help that yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. okay. And they'll have to have some sort of uh, retention. <laughs> Built into that. Right. So it'll help the, the, yeah. the time. And it's zoned for commercial already, the vast majority. Right? Part of the property is already zoned general retail district. Uh, but in the comprehensive plan, it calls for employment center, and this is going to be a, an employment generator. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's right in line with the comprehensive plan. The motion for approval. Second. But we still need, uh, yes, we still need a public hearing. Public hearing. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Now we'll move to the uh, public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? <clears throat> no one's here. We'll
we'll move on to the consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request for a residential single family district to general retail district for 30.28 acres out of a portion of block 12, Stewart Place subdivision, survey 139, all of block 7, and a portion of block 8, Sun Village subdivision located along the north side of the U.S. Expressway 83 between Sam Lane and Alpes Palmas Road. Do I need to say that again? No, uh, ma'am, but the, uh, mayor, but the city attorney would read the caption oh, at, yes. at this point. So that's why the mic was off. <laughs> <laughs> it's 6B. 16? 6B. Yeah, I know. My book is a little messed up. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Arlington rezoning from residential single family R1 district to general retail GR district for a property located along the north side of US Expressway 83 between Tam Lane and Atlas Palmas Road with a legal description of 30.28 acres out of a portion of Block 12 Stewart Place subdivision survey 139 all of Block 7 and a portion of Block 8 Sun Village subdivision. So do I vote? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, public hearing to consider an ordinance on, for, on first reading for a rezoning request from General Retail District to Plan Development District for residential and multifamily use purposes for 25.33 acres out of land comprised of 10 acres out of lot 9, 9.99 acres out of lot 10, 2.67 acres out of lot 15, and 2.67 acres out of lot 16, block 146, San Benito Land and Water Company subdivision located on the northeast corner of Hain Drive and Wayland Road. Applicant is Armando Elizarde. Yes, so this is a proposed a new residential development along the north side of Hain Road between Huelen and FM 509. That's the property that we're looking at. It's currently zoned general retail district. They're proposing a mix of residential uses. That's the aerial photograph of the property. Um, and then you have phase one was approved two years ago and it's almost complete. And so now they're proposing phase two uh, to the east. This shows the layout of the proposed uh, subdivisions. Uh, phase one, like I said, is almost complete. It's almost ready for recording. So phase two, they're, they're proposing to extend Golden Bear from Treasure Hills uh, Boulevard to Hain. So this project uh, generates uh, causes uh, regional benefits because people that live over, uh, in Treasure Hills will be able to use Golden Bear to connect to Hain and to FM 509 and vice versa. So this project has a regional uh, benefits to the community. Uh, so and then you have uh, also better connectivity to phase one. F the street of phase one will connect to the street of phase two. So it's, it's going to have nice uh, circulation of, uh, of road, uh, connectivity of roadways. This is a proposed a multifamily development and then the rest <laughs> is single family homes. And this is uh, more details. This is a uh, Hain Boulevard. The proposed multifamily development, the rest is single family homes. Detention areas on the west side here and here are the, the proposed uh, on site detention. Are they following the 10 year, or are they following the new, the new standards? Or this this uh, subdivision application came in before the new guide was adopted, so this will be 25 year. 25 year? Yeah. And is the developer here? Yes. Okay, can we yeah. speak to him? Yes, uh, yes, well, you that's, can. That's going to be a problem. Uh, Gabe, how much money has, has Adams Crossing South cost the city because we didn't follow the, the stricter guidelines? Is it, has it passed $500,000 yet? Well, um, it, it has cost us staff time going out there to actually have vector trucks uh, help with the, uh, uh, the drainage that's there, uh, trying to get that cleared out. Uh, we haven't tracked that, but uh, it has cost us staff time 
No, but but uh, the last figures I saw was it was it was nearing half a million dollars of the city's money. Right, so, is there a way that we can put it where they can um, have to abide by the 50 year instead of the 25 year? Uh, that could be a condition of the PD district. I believe so. About the what? I'm sorry. Because right now you have a you have a PD district a going before you, right? So that can be a, a condition of the PD Would district. Conditioned upon. Conditioned on, on the new drainage requirements. Okay. Wait, wait. I have a question. You asked about Adams Crossing. Is this Adams Crossing? No. No, same developer. Is it the same? Um, yes. Is, this, same, is same, it? He was following the same restrictions. Okay. Is it the same elevation at the same location, or is this across it's, town? It's, it's worse. How is it worse? Because it's, it's on the Treasure Hill. That, that whole, that's all flat. That's all. That's a word. That's there, worse. There's no place else in Harlingen that's flat. You're asking me a question, I'm answering. Yeah, you said that it's, it's different. This is different because that property is flat. The developer using the same guidelines, which in my, my thing, it's, it's cut in the, the corners of responsible development. Oh, okay. so you're calling them irresponsible developers. I, I, think, I think that we're, the city passed a stricter requirements to uh, improve the drainage, right? The, the detention of time so that, so that we don't have flooding problems. Every rainfall that we get right now, even currently, even a rainfall, not a hurricane, just a rain event, and I'm crossing south, floods. And what those does that have to do with this property? Yes, those are three hundred thousand dollar homes that are getting water in their houses. But what does that have to do with this property? It's the same developer. And so, are you saying the same developer put flooding into Adams Crossing, said, and they're I going to put flooding not, into this we one? We did not require him to do uh, stricter standards for, for building. Were you a commissioner then? Yeah, and I, and I voted against it. Oh, you did? I did. Okay. So what does Adams Crossing have to do with this? I'm missing. The, the only connection is, is, it's, the, it's, is the developer. No, no, no. It's development, period. Ah, it, it, so you don't want any development. I want responsible development. Define responsible development. Following uh, the best practices that we can. Define best practices. We just implemented them. Well, what let's, are they? let's let's stay let's stay focused on I am on, focused on what we have here, and I understand so, Commissioner Mesmer so, and and Commissioner Uribe, but I think before us, it doesn't you know who the developer is. It it it, it doesn't matter who the well, developer is. Well, it matters is a whole lot to, to Uribe, right? But I think what before us is 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 this subdivision. And I think that Commissioner Perez brought up a good point that we've changed our standards. And maybe we need to move to ensuring that all developers are, are meeting these standards, I, I, regardless of, of who the I have the a question is. of our attorney. I, well, I think in this, this is an ex post facto, isn't it? Um, no. And the reason why, Commissioner, I understand what you're saying, because we've got issues about whether they apply to this standard or previous standard. Right. But in this case, you're seeking to impose a new plan development district, which can impose its own unique standards on that area. So they're so not grandfathered in? So as a condition of granting a planned development district, and I don't know what the compromises are, I don't know whether it's you're going for density, I don't know why it was necessary to have a planned development district as opposed to a regular, but as a condition for that, you can ask that stricter drainage, the new <coughs> drainage standards be followed, yes you can, because you are going for that planned development district. So I'll make that motion. We have a, a public. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, public You're right. Hearing. Do you have anything? Do you have anything? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cervantes. Now we're going to open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against? Uh, yes, Ron Lozano. Since we have Mr. Cervantes here and the ex post facto factor that he just brought up, when you said application, were you referring to the original application or the current one that the attorney just said, the plan development? Your comments directed to the commission, please, uh, uh, Mr. Lozano. Well, if you know, uh, that it's either a yes or no. Maybe Mr. Gonzalez would know. What was your question again? You just heard Cervantes say that Elizalde had put this in the application. What application, the general retail or the plan development? No, the subdivision plan development. Which, which one was it? That it was the subdivision plan development. It wasn't, it wasn't he, you have to submit the plan development before you can actually 
start applying for what he's doing today. We got that when the the uh, the. But, the, but the, there, he's going for a distinctly different venture now than the original application. And I'm just trying to find out if this is the original or the new one. No, this is the original application that was admitted. So it's not grandfathered in because this is entirely <coughs> different. Thank you, Mr. Saucy. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lethwich? Uh, yes, Robert Lethwich, uh, 909 East Parkwood, Arlington. I just wanted to uh, make a differentiation here for Mr. Mesmer. It's like uh, the, attorney, the city attorney pointed out, this is a highly dense plan development. And you do a plan development so that you can you can kind of go beneath the standard lot size and street sizes. And that's why this is even more important that it be brought up to a higher drainage standard. When you compare it to Adams Crossing, this is even more dense than that subdivision. And I'd like to also point out that another planned development done uh, in this same area was elevated above the neighboring subdivision and those created runoff into the older subdivision because the elevation was increased in the new planned subdivision and this could be the same issue with this subdivision so I would recommend that you do modify that to the the 50-year uh, drainage plan so that you, you have some on-site detention and not affect the neighboring communities because every time we build something new around here it seems like the neighbors are the ones taking the water thank you thank you mr. Lefwich. You want to step to the podium, sir? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Armando <coughs> Elizarde. I'm the developer of Phase 2 uh, uh, East Treasure Haven. There was a lot of misinformation that was thrown up here. I'm going to answer all of your questions, but a lot of the information is not correct. And I'll address each one of you, but I do want to state for the record I'm only here for zoning. I'm not e flood. <laughs> that's not even on the agenda. But I will go ahead and answer your questions because there's a lot of misinformation that was just thrown up here, which was incorrect. <clears throat> first of all, excuse me, I have a little bit of a sore throat. First of all, you addressed Adams Crossing, okay, Gabe? Uh, right now, Adams Crossing, the city has spent zero, zero, okay. <laughs> What you said is incorrect and false, Gabe. The money that was spent was to clean out that canal along 13th Street to make it wider and to make it deeper. That benefits all of North Harlingen. Has nothing to do with Adams Crossing. <clears throat> Am I on the right track, Gabe, or did you spend no, half a million correct. dollars? Um, I can't address that right now. I need to go back and check to okay, see. Okay, well. I will ask for, I will ask okay, for a well, breakdown well, for you, I, sir. I'm, uh, of the charges yeah okay because I've seen them twice already okay well so yeah. unless, unless they're presenting me bad information okay. I will be happy to sit down with you and show you what it costs the city okay because we fought and and and, and we went against this the city engineer uh, who was pushing for that let, let me just then? continue because I want to address there was a lot of questions up here so I want to address all of them because there was a lot of misinformation so first of all Adams crossing okay <laughs> The city cleaned out the canal in North Harlingen. It has nothing to do with Adams Crossing. Number two, okay, especially if any of you are engineers. Adams Crossing is flood zone X. It gets no better than that. That's the top. <clears throat> you go back and check, if you live there, go back and check your insurance statement. You're in flood zone X. So I love you to go talk okay. to my neighbors. Mayor, point, point of order, Mayor. Yes, let's, let's let him continue. Well, I'm, I, I understand, but let's proceed. Let me, let me okay, address Let's him. not talk over, over each other. Go ahead. Okay. It's flood zone X, which is the best that it gets, okay? Mm. Number one. Number two, it does not flood whenever it rains, okay? The city of Harlingen, two, three, I don't know how many years ago, had six, 15 inches of rain in three hours. There is no subdivision in the valley that could handle that, okay? And... The houses didn't flood, the streets flooded. We, oh the God. city of Harlingen has, has, has a... I'm gonna take a rest break. Please proceed. I'd like to state for the record that, incredibly rude, I'm up here trying to be a professional with you, 
trying to answer your questions professionally and doing that kind of, I mean, that's what you're serving the community. That's what he got elected to do, to walk out. I understand, out. sir. Okay, let's, I'm sorry. let's stay on I'm sorry. Point. Okay. Next, I would like to answer your questions. I haven't even sure. gotten to mine because I'm answering yours. I under, okay. Go ahead. Next thing is, this is also flood zone X, which is the best that it gets. We have done three subdivisions in this area already with zero problems. We have two more planned with zero problems. There is over 100 acres right now, not mine, being developed in that area. That is a PD and it's a planned development already that is being developed in that area. The next thing that makes this phase very, very unique and special, we are adding Golden Bear Drive, okay? That is going to be the second exit out of Treasure Hills. That is going to be a way, it, right now, if there's an emergency in the entrance of Treasure Hills where the school is, you can't get out unless you go back to 509. We are donating the land to the city. We are paying for the, for the installment of Golden Bear Drive free to the taxpayers, which will save the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> If this development isn't done, the only way you're going to get out of Treasure Hills is 509, where the trailers back up. Now the community will be able to come out to Hain Drive, take a left to the school, a right to Treasure Hills. It will give them another way out. It will lighten the traffic in that area. And we're doing that for free for the city. So it's not only about my development, it's about the people that live in that area and what it's going to give them. So there's a lot of misinformation that's up here that is incorrect. Thank you, Mr. Elizante. I do have one, one, one yes, question for you. Um, yes, ma'am. You know, the city of Harlingen wants to be pro-development, and we want our city to grow, but we want to do so responsibly. With these new changes where we have increased um, for developers, which I understand that there's some cost to be absorbed, um, is that something that you're willing to do? Well, let me just point this out. In this development, First of all, as developers and the planning department can tell you, we've been working on this for years. When you identify a piece of property, it's years before it comes to this board. And we're working on it years in advance. In the meantime, if the ordinance are changing, we're trying to keep up with those. I will tell you that, and I don't know if you caught this. We're gonna but, have to wrap it up. Okay, this right here, all that is the pond. That right there is the pond. I, I caught that. Okay, I, it's an I, acre and a half of the pond. The second thing is, when we submitted our papers, that 25 year, that was on the books. That's what we went with. Mm -hmm. It changed three times in 18 months. We went 10, 25, <clears throat> and 50. We cannot keep up with that. You were changing the ordinances faster than we could design. So we went with what's on the books at the current time. It's not fair to developers in the community to say, well, we made a change and now you're going to change it. You're changing too fast. The development is in the pipeline already. I, I understand. So, I, so just to, to know, answer the question, it would yes, be you, no. To answer your question, we've been put on notice going forward that it's a 50 year plan. All our developments will be that. This plan was handed in with 25, so we would go with that. I understand. Did you have a question, Commissioner well, Pettis? I would think that, because um, I know I, I understand your concern for developers, but I would also like my job as the city commissioners to worry about the future residents that will be living there. And I know this area where this subdivision is not it's not in my district, but um, I always get actually because I'm very active on social media and I get a lot of uh, messages from um, District Three. Um, that they're, they're telling me that their area um, floods, Treasure Hills floods. I have some coworkers that literally live in Treasure Hills, and they're always telling me like, "Hey, you need to do something about Treasure Hills. You need to do something about Treasure Hills." And then this, and this, because it floods in that area. And I would think, as a developer, because I know you're a very successful developer and you're doing you're doing good things for Harlingen, but I would think you'd want to, you know, make sure that the future residents that would live in your subdivisions you're, you're constructing would have the best, um, you know, standards that are available, and you're right, it's been changing. But if you've noticed, it's been changing where, because the reason that it's been changing is because we've noticed that there has been an issue with the flooding, and then the city has felt that by raising the standards to the 50 year, that is the best um, course 
for the people here in Harnigan to prevent additional flooding and to improve drainage. So what we're asking you here in the City Commission is to help us. Help us help the people that you're building these homes for. Help us improve their flooding so when they move in, they don't have to worry a year or two or three years from now, oh, my house is flooding. Because you're saying right now that, oh, um, it's not getting into the house. But why are we going to be um, reactive and wait till it actually does before we do something? We can prevent that and we just you just follow the standards there are right now. 50 years and you're good. Because I'm going to make a motion to approve, but with the condition that we add the 50-year um, standard um, to your subdivision. Because I think that it's the responsible thing to do. And I'm not anti-development. I'm pro-development. But like the mayor said, I believe in responsible development. And I think for the past couple of years, that's been lacking. I feel that that's the reason why the city is in the situation that we're in, because we've had subdivisions have been rubber stamped. Um, you know, some subdivisions have been built, have gotten waivers that haven't even met the minimum requirement that we used to have. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to make sure that the city can do everything we can to make sure that the, we do something about the flooding. So I'm going to make a motion to... Hang on, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Here. So first of all, we need to read the caption. Go ahead. I thought right. it nice Second of all, there, I, I think we need to distinguish two things because there, there's a little truth on both sides here, right? First of all, in terms of the subdivision itself, if the subdivision came in under the old rules, then the old rules apply to the subdivision. However, he's asking for something different, a special fit, plan development. Right. We, we're not imposing we're not those scary, drainage yeah. restrictions on a subdivision. You're imposing those on the rezone, on the plan development district. So if you want the plan development district, and you, you can impose those drainage <coughs> conditions on that district because it's a special issue right the point is i can i can impose those restrictions uh, on the on the plan development okay issue. and i think that's going to come in later i think right now it's just a rezoning well right and then, so if you're going to approve it then it has to be it's approved, approved condition. with those conditions okay. on that district okay i would like to point out that we've been working with the city for years we're installing this golden bear and, and we're donating the land to the city I could have not done that and made the whole thing multifamily. It's general retail. Under that, I can do the density less, but I didn't. Hey, I didn't do that because I thought that exit was important to the city. That street is on the city's thoroughfare plan. If we're going to impose those and raise those standards, we may no longer be able to afford to do this subdivision if that's what we're going to do. So keep in mind that we're giving the taxpayers free, besides the land, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we're going into things that have nothing to do with my subdivision. So I want you to realize that what he just told you is true. I can go multifamily and not come before this board because it's general retail. But I'm not doing that. I'm going 25. I'm trying to build houses. But you're electing to go the other way, and you're going to lose the opportunity to save this community hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you don't believe me, the gentleman's right here. We have 100% support from the planning department. It was voted on unanimously. 100% support from the city engineer, from the fire marshal. Every single entity in this city supports the project. You're going to cost this city hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you don't believe me, here he is, ask him. And I'm also I, don't, I don't understand that mentality. You don't realize if you don't realize what's going to happen there, that, lies, and that's what it's I'm sorry. Are you? Yeah. No, no. No, let's no. let's let's. No, we're not going to talk over. This anyone. is my road because it's going to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Elizarde. I, we've been very generous with the time, and I appreciate your time and your your efforts. And and like I said before, we are want to be pro development, and and hopefully the. The commission takes that into consideration. Thank you for all of your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else I want to speak for or against? I'd like another round. Just real quick. Mr. Martinez? Hi. I told the PSG they were going to have this problem. They didn't pay attention to the upgrades of the numbers. We are pro development. And this gentleman should not be held to problematic issues that we have because we're not organized. I'd like to see what the drainage district, number three, the one from San Benito, what they said. They're the ones responsible for drainage in this area. Am I correct or not, Mr. Gable? Drainage district number three right now wouldn't really have any impact on that no, particular. No. Do they 
pay taxes to drainage district number three. Oh, that I'm not, I'm not sure. Yes, sir, they do. Look at the tax reports. Mr. Here you will tell you. I believe this gentleman was a supportive staff at this time. He, if, if the drainage district has already done an assessment and evaluation of this, they're the ones who are responsible. They're paying taxes, all these people at Treasure Hills. No, they're not. I mean, I, 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 the city has in the middle from, from the a royal city that, I mean, uh, royal to the east, according to the mapping, the drainage district number three uh, controls that and they pay taxes to it. They should be doing more improvements, enlarging the ditches, 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 et cetera, because this is the best area to build by the Arroyo. Just draw straight lines and bigger ditches and you're getting there real fast. The other areas we have problems, is, of course, you just talked about 13th Street. But let's not stop development because we're because this past administration did these these changes. Let's work with the drainage district and the city and the drainage district number five, I think, is the one that's over here to uh, on the east side of town, and get this thing corrected because we need to build. The lumber yards need to sell. The plumbers and HAV, et cetera. I believe if, if it has passed staff, the only question I got is the drainage district going to be able to cover a six, eight, or 10 inch rain that's pretty much storms around here. 15 inches right. Doesn't, you can't handle the kind of water anywhere. It's going to eventually go out. But this is drains that, that area drains much better. The only problem we have here is the Treasure Hills right there at that Resaca. It's unidentified. It has a flooding. And that, that area should be a drainage district number three problem, not the city. They pay taxes for that. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? I'm sorry, Mr. Elizalde. We already gave you a lot of, a lot of time. I do apologize. Anyone else? We're going to close the uh, public hearing at this time. And I'll ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances, ordinance number 16-8 of the city of Harlingen to rezone from general retail district to plan development district for residential and multifamily purposes on 25.33 acres out of land compromised of 10 acres out of lot 9, 9.99 acres out of lot 10, 2.67 acres out of lot 15, and 2.67 acres out of lot 16, block 146, San Benito Land and Water Company, located at the northeast corner of Hain Drive and Wayland Road. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve based on the conditions that the developer meets the 50-year standard. I'll second them. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Mm. Motion, motion carries. Three, two? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Cervantes. Um, moving on to item number eight, a public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request from Plan Development District for commercial use to residential multifamily district. No, no. For lot one, no. block one, Adam, am I not right? I'm sorry, Adams right. Landing Subdivision located at 1302 Adams Landing Avenue. Applicant <coughs> is Moore Land Surveying. Yes, Mayor. This is a property at the corner of Adams Landing Avenue and Loop 499. It's currently a zone PD district uh, for commercial uses, and they're, change, they're proposing to change it to multifamily residential. This is the property. Adams Landing, Loop 489, is currently zone PD district. This, this, this subdivision is all developed, and so we just have this uh, vacant tract at the corner that the original developer, the, the vision was for this property to be uh, retail or commercial, but it never developed that, that way. We have, there's a buyer that is interested in purchasing, but for, the, for multi multifamily development, which is what you have across this across the street. <coughs> That's a picture of the property, the comprehensive plan. <coughs> no one spoke in opposition during the Planning and Sewing Commission meeting, and the board recommended approval unanimously. Is there any discussion? 
Okay, we'll open it up for a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against the ordinance? Having no one to speak, we'll move on to, um, I'd ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen, rezoning from planned development district for commercial use to residential multifamily M2 district for lot one, block one, Adams Landing subdivision located at 1302 Adams Landing Avenue, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request for residential single family uh, district to residential duplex district for lots 11 and 12, block four, Reina subdivision located at 721 Fitman Street. Uh, applicant is Marcos Reyes for Juan F. Salazar. Yes, Mayor, this is on, on the middle of Pitman Road, be, be right, halfway between Finley and Kelly, which is halfway between Commerce and Newcombs. So this is a, an older neighborhood that has two vacant lots in the middle of the neighborhood, and the, these are big lots, 50 by, 50 by 140. So the property owner is interested in building a duplexes, a one duplex in each, of the, in each of the two lots. So it's, a, it's an older neighborhood. It's all developed with single-family homes. There is some duplex zoning on the next street to the north, which is Orange Heights. Um, so it's two vacant dots in the middle of houses all around. There's a photo of the property. In the comprehensive plan, it calls for low-density residential, and duplex is considered a low-density residential, so it's in line with the comprehensive plan. And uh, no one spoke in opposition during the public hearing, uh, so the board uh, Recommended approval unanimously, five to zero vote. Is there any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Public, S public hearing. Yes. So now we'll move to the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? Having no one speak um, for or against, we'll move to. Um, I'll ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen, rezoning from residential single family R1 district to residential duplex R2 district for lots 11 and 12 block 4, Reina subdivision located at 721 Pitman Street, and providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 10, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a special use permit to allow an unmanned telecommunications internet facility in a general retail district located at 114 and 118 West Madison Avenue, bearing legal descriptions of lots 10 and 11, block 25, Harlingen Original Town Site. The applicant is Norma Branscombe of Vexus Fiber. Yes, this is for a proposed uh, building. Uh, for a fiber optic uh, telecommunications uh, that requires a special use permit. Uh, this is on Madison Avenue between A Street and 1st Street. You have the fire station to the, to the north. So the zoning is all general retail district. The fire station is just north. The current the property is vacant. Fire station. And it's all, it's all commercial. There's no houses uh, around the property. Uh, photo of the property. Uh, so this is a picture of what the building will, will look like. We asked for an example. So that's an example that they sent, the company sent us of what the building uh, will look uh, is, you know, I think it's going to blend with the, with the surrounding areas. And it's going to be all fiber optic uh, cables to improve communications for the whole part of town. <laughs> Staff recommends approval, contingent on uh, conditions by planning and building inspections and fire department. <coughs> planning and zoning commission held a public hearing and no one spoke in opposition and recommended approval unanimously subject to the conditions. Is there any discussion? Move to the open, uh, the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against? 
Good afternoon, or evening. Uh, I'm Norma Branscombe. I'm with Bexis Fiber. I'm Director of Construction for the RGB. Just to let you know who we are, we're a new fiber to the home ISP. So we'll be providing video, voice, and data services to, the, to our customers here once we're all done with construction. So what this lot's going to be used for, it's a prefabricated building that will house telecommunications there to allow, that's going to be our central office to the end customer. So uh, we've already started some constructions in some areas. How far out does your reach on that? It's going to be from San Benito all the way to Mission right now. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so. Excellent. Yes. Well, does welcome. It, is it better, <laughs> closer than, uh, or is it the same? Like, is it the same in Mission as it is in Arnett? It's all going to be fiber to the home, so. We so are direct, directly fiber to yeah. the home from that central office, from that location, to to the customer. That's excellent. So it's okay. gonna it's gonna allow symmetrical service. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the the public hearing and um, council. Mm -hmm. In ordinance amending the code of ordinances, ordinance number sixteen dash one of the City of Harlingen to issue a special use permit to allow an unmanned telecommunications internet facility in a general retail district located at 114 and 118 West Madison Avenue, bearing legal descriptions of lots 10 and, and 11, block 25, Harlingen Original Town Site, subject to the following. One, compliance with the requirements administered by the Planning and Development, uh, Building Inspections, and Fire Prevention Departments. Motion for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11, public hearing and action to approve the one-year action budget for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 uh, of the Community Development Block Grant Program and fiscal year 2022 to 2023 of the Home Investment Partnership Program. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. For the record, Elvira Cavazo, CDBG Compliance Coordinator. In compliance with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development requirements, our co current approved consolidated plan and st strategy is based on HUD's national objectives, which are to provide decent housing, create suitable living environments, and to expand economic opportunities that would primarily benefit low to moderate income persons. As a condition in receiving a Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and home funds, the City is required to prepare a one-year action plan outlining objectives, outcomes, and indicators for each activity that receives funding. The 2022-2023 physical year CDBG allocation is uh, $887,502, which is a decrease of uh, 37970 and a home program allocation is 379,160, which is an increase of 44,743. <coughs> the notice of funding availability was published in the Valley Morning Star and posted on the city's website on April the 8th, 2022. Application deadline was May 5th, 2022. Seven applications were submitted from subrecipients, six from the Parks and Recreation Department, and one from Code Compliance Department, for public facilities and services needs. A public hearing was held on May 23rd to receive citizen comments regarding priorities and presentations were made by applicants for funding requests. A workshop was held on May 31st, 2022 by the Community Development Advisory Board to establish funding recommendations for City Commission. <coughs> Prior to establishing their funding recommendations, the Community Development Advisory Board and staff reviewed and elevated the applications based on their prior performance, priority, need, submission requirements, and project eligibility. The recommendation provided in your packets was anonymously approved by all Community Development Advisory Board members present. The required 30-day comment period will begin on June 20th and then on July 20th. The Mayor and City uh, Commission will pass a resolution adopting the 20. 2022-2023 funding allocations on July 20th, 2022. We're available if you have any questions. Mayor, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm a little concerned about the the 234,000 going to lighting 
and I'd like to see if we can maybe give more to the Boys and Girls Club. And also, you mentioned code compliance. Uh, was there a, a fund request for code compliance or? Yes, clearance and demolition. That's where? Clearance and demolition. So we're only giving them 65, and I know that we're shorthanded with the code compliance. I, I think we need more staff members in that, but I, I guess my whole point is, is there a way where we can um, maybe move those funds back and, and reallocate them well, to? I, I want to talk to you, Javier, and s about the lights and stuff, like what exactly, you know, how's that going to work and stuff like that. And I, and I would also ask, I'm oh, sorry. Hello? Hello? Okay, it's working. Um, also about the Boys and Girls Club, I'm a big supporter of the Big and Girls, uh, Boys and Girls Club. I mean, like I mentioned to Mr. Gathright once, I mean, I played there growing up. I, when in my thinner days, I would play basketball on, on the courts. But um, I know this year they they we gave them a raise. I think um, earlier this year, I don't know how much. It, Gabe, do you know how much it was that we? Because I know they asked for a raise that we were giving them because we allocate a certain amount of money to them every year. Um, last year we gave them a hundred thousand dollars for, but that was for COVID-related expenses yeah. that they had. Um, that's been the only additional funding that we've given them. But because I remember approving like that, because we, we give them something annually, right? We, we do. We give them uh, two different allocations. One is for the uh, the youth services program they provide, and then another one is for their general. But programs. didn't we increase that as well? That yes, yearly? yes, we did. How much by how much? Oh, Commissioner, I, I, I don't have that number. But we did but, increase it, right? Yes, we did. And then I also know that I remember seeing it because I saw it on the in the website that they received three hundred and thirty-three thousand and three hundred thirty-three dollars, and I don't know if it was thirty-three cents too, because I know the county made a big deal about that. So I know they've been receiving a lot of funding um, from that. So I, I don't think I would agree with with moving some of that to the Boys and Girls Club because I think they're a great organization, and but I, I think they've been funded a lot this year. Um, especially by the county, the $300,000, that was a lot. So I, I would prefer to get a little bit more, like why that lighting is needed by the parks. Because I, I know there was there's something about the, the park and people are saying, oh, why are we using the lighting? And I know that I've heard, wow, we can maybe repurpose some parks, like the one we have over there by the, the soccer complex. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the, the, this funding is supposed to be for low income. And I agree with that. But a lot of the people that use the parks at Victor Park are low-income people. That, that's how the little kids go out there and they play and they need the lighting in order to play their football and all that. And then asking them to drive all the way over there to the city by the city um, land transfer station, I mean, that's imposing more cost on a lot of them because, you know, gas prices the way they are and all that. I, I don't think I would agree with that. I know, but, but, but that's... But I, uh, with all due respect, like, like, they, they didn't ask for a lot. They asked for 60 grand. Which is, Who? I think the Boys and Girls Club. No, I, yeah, and, I get and that. And they got that cut, cut in half to, or to 33000 What I look at is the, the return investment on the money, right? You're giving six, that increase of $30,000 is going to make a bigger impact. And I, I agree with that. Maybe, you know, I don't know about the lighting situation or any, any of the other ones, but I'm talking about the, the direct impact that that makes with those kids. And 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 uh, if you, you you were part of that uh, that presentation of to hear those success stories of, of, of them you know uh, having a chance and, and, and the services they provide not only for the students but also for the school district and whatnot um, I think it's a small increase uh, I don't think it was a big ask uh, because they make that little bit of money go a long way and that's just my my opinion um, I, I I can definitely agree with you on the other stuff you know if it's lighting maybe you know you you uh, value engineer it or you do something with it that they get partial or or whatever but but the direct impact of those dollars to the boys and girls club and yes they get funding a lot because it's a great organization and it takes a ton of money to operate no, right? I, I, 24 7 and just like every other business there everything has increased as far as their uh, food supply uh, um, electrical all the utilities or whatever it takes you know to, to operate so I would just suggest, I mean, like I said, it's a $30,000 increment, or 20, actually $27,000 increment, that, that you're actually to say, you know, reduce it from somewhere else, but give them the, the $60,000 that, that they asked for, because they've proven that they use the money the right way, and it has a direct impact on a bunch of kids. Yes, no, I agree with you 100% about that, but at the same time, I'm bearing in mind that they got a check for $333,000. But but we're not in their, I mean, I don't know what, what they have a lot of expenses, it, it may not be. No, no I understand you know? that, but at the same time, I'm worried about also the kids that go use Victor Park. So if we could speak to Javier, and I, I just wanted to know, like, what exactly, like, are the lights really needed? What's the, like, what's going on? Like, why are we, I know, I understand the lights are very expensive. Or what's we, going on? We, yes, before, before he answers yeah. that, I just had a real quick Okay, question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And I think this is more for Gabe. 
So I know that these these are the funds that they've requested to present to us, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I didn't mean to complicate things. All I'm saying is, can we at, at tonight just maybe table this so that way they can take th those funds and reallocate them where we think they would be better uh, suited? And let me give you an example. I, I know the lights are important, but the the purpose and the goal of CDBG is supposed to be for low income housing rehabilitation. And if you look at 14A, we're only giving 31,000 for housing rehabilitation, to, or I think some of that 234 should be used. We're only giving housing rehabilitation administration 42, and then code compliance. I mean, all of us have gotten phone calls on we don't have enough enforcement, we don't have enough staff, and so I'm just wondering if some, to make it simple, can we, can we reallocate some of these funds by making some kind of a motion tonight? Frank. Uh, if, if I could, if I could just kind of explain where where we are with the guidelines. Um, any, if you see the categories under public services, it starts at 05A, and it goes down to 05M. Mm -hmm. uh, that total has to be 15 percent or less of the 887 thousand dollars. Okay. So those numbers can only be allocated and redistributed within that public service section. Uh, that. Those dollars cannot total more than $133,000, 133125 But we can reallocate the $27,000, correct? Uh, you can, the 27000 in... Um, For the Boys and Girls Club? Well, you can, but you've got to take it from some someplace else in public services. It's right. got to stay in public services. Right. Uh, Javier, I, I have a, um, a question, and I think it goes to um, Commissioner Puente. When I was reviewing this, it, it stands out to me that the purpose of the sole purpose of the funds is to provide it says provide decent housing and create suitable living environments and to expand economic opportunities that would primarily benefit low to moderate income persons. How do we um, come to providing, you know, 234,000 and then another 35,000. I, I agree that the lights need to, to be fixed and we need to make those improvements at Victor Park, but is this the right funny path because, yeah, to, to, to get that, to, to, to be able to do that? Um, it looks like it's not um, based on, I don't know how that fits into decent housing or creating those living environments or expanding economic opportunities. Um, I don't see that, can you? Can you explain? Well, I, I understood that um, the funding is for quality of life um, projects, right? And so these are quality of life projects, um, bringing kids, uh, providing opportunities for them um, to play uh, football. There's only three fields that we have in the city of Harlingen that are football uh, designated. The rest are either soccer or baseball. Um, and there's, so, there's always request for football fields, um, especially lighted, because uh, kids want to play in the evening because it's, it's hot, especially right now. So that was the reason, or that was the purpose of us submitting our application. Um, I know that based on the census track, uh, across the expressway, there's a housing project. I believe that's on M Street. Um, and so those are the, the things that we're taking into to, um, uh, we're factoring in when we uh, submit in our application. Um, you know, Victor Park is, you know, serves a lot of people. Uh, we have tennis, we have baseball, we have uh, football, we have the new playground there, uh, the dog park, and then the swimming pool, of course. So um, it's a roundabout uh, park that offers opportunities for several Sir, but I kids. think I've asked this before, and maybe, maybe, maybe remind me, or maybe I haven't. Those leagues, those leagues, they, they charge fees, right, for entries and stuff. Yes, sir. Couldn't, couldn't they, they tag on a fee that we would collect as a city that would go to such improvements that, that would make, like, cause are, are we doing all the maintenance on the fields and stuff, right? We, yes. We right on that? Yes. So, so uh, I know it's supposed to be a, a you know, a, a, Not for profit. a, a 501C or right. whatever, right? And, and, and you know, some of those kids, they have, like, you know, 1,000 kids playing or whatever. It's a large number. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we have them collect a fee f that they would be able to turn in that would that would address some of those issues? And it's not going to fix them on the spot, <coughs> but it would be a continual thing that it could be a reimbursement to the city. And we can, uh, to the mayor's point, of saying 
not, we're not disagreeing that they need the lights and they'd be a great asset, but right. this may not be the same, the right funding mechanism for it. That we that we want to use this fund particularly to do X, Y, and Z. There's you know other projects uh, like that Commissioner Point to put that we're only giving thirty, forty thousand dollars to that we have a better impact on the purpose of what is created for. Because I think by by allowing them to continue to put that kind of investment, <coughs> and the people that are running those leagues, even though it's a nonprofit, you know they're collecting quite a bit of money, right? We right. We, we can do that, Commissioner. Just but we just have to amend the contracts to actually include Let that me. they charge us. I got a couple of ideas here. I agree with uh, Commissioner Puente uh, on that 234. That needs to be re reallocated. My number one thing, if we're really concerned, we need to do something about the uh, the clearance and the, uh, the uh, demolishing the unsafe structures around all the schools. That's a good point. Okay. So lighting is good, but demolishing these structures that are unsafe, especially around schools, we need to take care of that. We need to address it. So if it was me, I'm all for moving all of it straight to the uh, clearance and demolition. Okay. Now, the lightings that you're requesting for the uh, football, I, if I'm mistaken, we received an email where there was issues with the lightings for the baseball fields, the, the Little League, because there was some type of tournament. You also have to keep in mind that we all, you also have other avenues. The number one avenue I think you can you have access to is the EDCB board that can take care of that those lighting issues. Now, as far as the football games, I'm sorry, but they could go to the east side and at the complex and use and use those fields out there. You have plenty of lights, <coughs> plenty of parking, and you don't endanger any pedestrian that goes out to their car because they parked on the side of the road. Okay. That's this year. We need to start addressing these unsafe structures. Okay, we already had we've had some major issues in, in different parts of the country and state where we have shoots uh, shootings in schools. Okay, so Commissioner, may I ask you what, what do you feel about the Boys and Girls Club? Listen, I don't have an issue with them having this 33. Not, well, it's 20. I mean, it's, I'm just going to increase it to 27. You, you do realize though, if you if you take away, if you want to add more to the Boys and Girls Club, you have to take something away from Migos of Valle yeah. to the area no. agency on aging. It's got to it's yeah. got to stay within yeah. that yeah. realm. So yeah. what, what uh, Gabe mentioned, and I I wrote it down here. So what is it? 15 percent. 15 percent. 15 percent of the public. So it, there's not a lot of money to work there, with. There's not a magic wand. Right. Yeah. Would it be possible, Sandy, for you uh, to like explain to us the allocations? Or is not Sandy. I'm sorry. Well, what Ms. can Cavazzo. we? What Ms. can Cavazzo. we increase? What, what could we? What amount could we increase with, with staying within the parameters? There's very little. I don't think that there's, there's not much room to room to to move but, in that section of because it's because as Gabe pointed out, there's only 15 percent or less can be allocated. So the, it, it, when you look at it, it's pretty. It seems where pretty would we fair. take it from? Or what, if we could, where could we take it from? I it can't. It, can't. It, it has to be from these areas. From, from 5A. Down right. to uh, 5M. 5M. I can't do that because 5N. That has to be 15 percent or less of yeah. the total allocation. Right. Yeah. And the so ADC. all of those are, are, I would argue, equally as important. So, so my, again, my question is, and this is towards Gabe, um, can we just reallocate the 234 to another fund to where we don't have to do it tonight, but e either we or the board can go and allocate that money? I like and I redistribute. Like, you'd I have like, to do I it. I like Commissioner Morales' idea. You'd have to do it tonight, but you just can't put it in public services. Okay. Uh, can't, we, could, we couldn't do that, what he suggested and move the money into the demolition of the housing, and then we'll find a different funding, or you all, you all will find a different mechanism for lighting, you know, uh, to fund the lighting. So uh, if and, it goes, and, and and then you can also do that with the Boys and Girls Club. I, I, I have a question. If you move. Uh, Two hundred thirty-four thousand dollars into demolition, and we don't use that two hundred thirty-four thousand dollars extra for demolition. What's the federal penalty? Um, we we have to stay within one point five percent of the uh, allocation every year. So you would take the entire um, eight hundred eighty-seven thousand of CDBG money, multiply times one point five, and then at middle of next year we'd have to have less than that otherwise HUD would make it a finding so there are federal guidelines and we have to follow them to the penny 
or there's federal repercussions to the city of Harlingen. But, but there's plenty of work. Is, is there $234,000 worth of work? Is that based on fact or, or a feeling? I'll tell you what. I think that's I, a fact. I have requested. It's a fact? You think it's a fact? I would, based on what? Okay. I, I would suggest. I live here. I would suggest. You live here. Okay. Let's, let's not talk over each other. I would suggest instead of, uh, if you guys don't want to do the lighting at Victor Park, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Vestal Park. I've been to that park because I had, it's not my district again, but they reached out to me. But, and, but let me finish. And again, that area, the parking lot is all messed up. They have no lighting. You have kids um, that are running all over in the dark. They can get run over and stuff, so we can help with that. Um, I know you're, you're, in, you're, 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 you're insisting on the Boys and Girls Club, no, but... No, my, my, my point was going to be is, is you all just brought up a really good point about lighting is not really an issue of where this fund should be. You, you, can, take, you can do lighting from general fund or, or some other fund, but this particular program... Right, is designed to do to to help out with certain areas, and and the way I read it, it's it's we're at, not allocating the money in the right places for the way the the fund is intended. You can you can, uh, I really like the idea of, uh, of Commissioner Morales of because there's a lot of bad houses in town. I mean, and and, and that costs money, and it has an immediate impact of of, of, of the, in the community uh, um, to not have. Um, you know, drug activity or uh, safe zones. Uh, you know, it's just clean up, clean up the neighborhoods. And we, and we used to do a really good program with the National Guard. I mean, uh, uh, and I know that 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 funding went away. I think for right now, now okay. let, let me. I have a question for you, ma'am. In another item or two, there's going to be more funds allocated to Vestal Park, correct? That's correct. Okay, so Vestal Park right now, off of this right here, we're looking at thirty-five thousand. Twenty-seven dollars, okay. But because there's an issue, or there was an issue in the past, Vestal Park is going to get another hundred fourteen thousand from the previous year, correct? Correct. So Vestal Park is going to get some funding that they never have had. So we should be, or well, they'll be better off now than they did the past three years or four years or prior to that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so Commissioner Pettis. Uh, no, I agree with you. That I didn't know about that. Yeah, that, that's fine. Commissioner, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put the whole two hundred and thirty-four thousand because I agree with Mike on that. That's rare, but I I agree with Mike. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> with the point that there there might not be. <laughs> it shouldn't be rare. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with him to the point where where we're not sure if there's that much um, <laughs> um, work for that area, to, you know, for all that demolition. So if you want the guys to move it, I would say move it to something that we that we can, like, okay. you know, the housing rehab or something that, like that's that. That's a good point, Commissioner Pettis. So let me make this recommendation. If we take the 234 and divide it by three, that's 78,000. We can leave 78,000 with the Victor Park lighting, give 78,000 to the housing rehabilitation, which would better have a better use and then the uh, other 78000 to the code compliance. And, they and then whatever funds that they don't use, they can, I guess they can allocate it That's, to whoever. We can, we, we can yeah. reprogram it. Right, they yeah. can reprogram it. But, but I, like, I like the idea of dividing it, but I, don't, I wouldn't put any money in line. You can find that money somewhere else. Well, put, it, put it into the programs that the, you know, these people, want, the, the, they, they requested money. This is well, what they got. It's a recommendation. You guys I, I, yeah. tell me what y'all want to do. Think, that was just one point. The thing about the lighting is that I understand what you're saying is like, hey, let's, let's not use... Um, this money, but the thing is, if we can use this money for lighting, why don't we? Because if if we if we take it out for like say our general fund or something like that, that's money that you're taking away from drainage and from other things that we can be doing. And this is federal money, so why why not put it to the, the lighting? I agree with you about taking the majority of it out for and and dividing it to the other areas. That that's that's good. But I don't think we should just leave the lighting completely alone. I mean, just leave them. They need lighting. The kids need lighting for the football. Okay, they so need we the lighting. Give the boys and girls club money. I want to make sure I understand. We the boys can't. and girls club, yes, they stay okay, at the. So the 20, Let, stay on, 33,000. It's mathematically stay impossible point. to increase to the Boys and right. Girls Club without hurting any other organization. So, Pick the organization you want to hurt or so kill. So can I make a motion I, at We this have point? a public, oh, public, public okay. comments, uh, public hearing. But um, <laughs> I just want to make, I just want to say one thing and, and then we can go to the public hearing. But the... Uh, there is a public yep. hearing. Yes, there is. Yeah, there it's is. They just didn't do it right. Um, so, to Commissioner Pettis's point, um, being a mom, right, and having kids that play sports, 
there's soccer going on all the time. So I, it would be impossible to have the football league at the soccer complex mm -hmm. at, because it'd be overlapping and there's just not enough space. So the soccer leagues go on all year. So we can't, it, it's, a, it's a great idea, uh, but it's not possible because there's not that space uh, available because it's being utilized throughout the year. It's not just um, seasonal. And I can tell you that as, as a mom. And I also agree with Commissioner Bettis that it would be a hardship for folks that live around Victor Park that maybe walk to the park or in that area to have to drive across town. So I do think it's important for the lighting, but I also um, think it's important that we are not designating such a significant amount to, to lighting when, when this money is, is supposed to go for other, other purposes. But a, a, a smaller portion seems to be, seems to be fair. But Gabe, um, <laughs> is this, and, and, I, and I ask this question, is this something that we have to <coughs> decide today or can we reallocate and come back and, and, can, and be able to pass? Can we do this time? in the first meeting in July and still be in compliance? Uh, Josh, do you know? Yeah. Yes, sir. It can be reallocated. We still have time until July the 1st. You know, they, they have to decide how they want to reallocate it tonight, and then we come back in July and just uh, adopt the resolution. But does it have to be, we have to do it tonight? We can't do it in July and then give you the no, one-year action plan? No, because our action plan is due to HUD by August. Yeah, they got to turn in. Okay. So yeah. it doesn't give us okay. enough time for the comment period. Okay, and yes, one, of, one of the things that... that we're coming to you so late is because uh, HUD didn't tell us what our entitlement amount was until about a month ago. Yes. They hadn't made a decision, so it, it, the federal government delayed it so long that it actually hurt our, our process of getting this to you. Right. And, and so, <coughs> once again, we've hired staff to come up with recommendations. And once again, you should fire the staff because you disagree with their recommendations. No. If you have to trust the people who are in charge of things within the city. Mike, there's nothing wrong with having a discussion. And a, a valid point of making sure we're using the monies the right way as they're intended, not finding a loophole to put things up. And I, I totally agree with the, the consensus of this board that we'll split that money up and however you all see fit or whatever you all agree upon. And, uh, I, you know. So who wants to make a motion? How we, we well, have to allocate first. Oh, sorry, we got to do the thing <clears throat> yes. The public. So... Do we need to allocate this before the public? How, how about we raise no, the allocate? We have to have the public so um, we'll go ahead and um, this has been great, but let's go ahead and move to the the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak for or against? Good evening, all. Uh, my name is Gerald Gathright, and I'm the director of the Boys and Girls Club for the past few years. And uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very grateful to all the city commissioners, the mayor, uh, all of the uh, community development block grant uh, board people, great people, uh, and wonderful, difficult decisions. Today, just today, over 500 youngsters <coughs> of different ages, 6 to 18, walked into one of the Boys and Girls Clubs today for activities. <laughs> Tonight, while we're here, Somewhere between 100 and 150 young adults are using outdoor facilities, help paid for by decisions made by you all to provide those facilities. A lot of that money that came from the county, we used to upgrade facilities. It was an opportunity for us to uh, upgrade our facilities. Uh, we have a 50-year-old building. It's not a brand new uh, state-of-the-art building, but it's something we have uh, turned into something that our community can be proud of, and it's going to serve youngsters long after uh, I depart. Uh, the funds, whether they come from CDBG or other sources, and so you'll know exactly how, how it had happened, we increased our funding by $50,000, which is paid monthly uh, back last year. And uh, so we're kind of losing half of that uh, this way. And uh, I can assure you, we will survive. We have a strong board of directors. We have great community support. And the city uh, commission and mayor, we have great support here. So I'm not concerned about it, but uh, I hate to see anything affect our operations. Uh, 
we have to pay people a little bit better to keep them so they don't go off. They can go to CVS and make $15 an hour. So they're going to come work for us for $9 an hour. So just like everybody else, all those things have changed. So the $27,000, which is, you know, we're talking about, not insurmountable, but it does have an effect on us, uh, has an effect on our services. And uh, with the number of children that we serve, I think we are able to provide a good bang for the buck uh, wherever those funds come from. So I'm a little ignorant about all the devices, but I could suggest maybe that $27,000 could be found in the general budget somewhere, make up the difference there. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but maybe there's a way. I have a question, because I was yes, told sir. by one of the members from the CB, the, the board, that the Boys and Girls Club had a, had a $344,000 surplus this past year. Is that true? That was because of the county money. So you can see what the surplus was when you take $333,000, $333 away from that. It's not a very big surplus. They use every dollar. And of course, that county money was a one-time thing. You know, they're not lining up or trying to figure out how our city has graciously done to fund this year after year. That was uh, uh, money that they had from COVID relief, and uh, we lobbied uh, long and hard uh, to get some. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you yes, for sir. all you do for our community. Thank you. Um, I, I did want to mention, I know we're on this, but um, on, we've, there's an allocation for the loaves and fishes for 17680 and I believe at a previous meeting we uh, provided 25000 for loaves and fishes. Yeah, that, that was for immigrant um, use. Okay, so this is not for that. Okay. No, this is uh, for operations. Uh, maybe there was some money there for the boys and girls. All right. Anyone else? Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, yes, good evening, y'all. Um, I was not planning to speak today, but I heard the trigger word voice club, and I decided I better speak up because uh, when I came in this evening, I saw Gerald Gaffer. I have not seen him since 75 <laughs> when I used to go to the voice club. Can you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you just repeat your name and, and address? And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My name is my name is Mike Gonzalez, 1632 Sam Houston Drive here in Arlington. I came in this evening and I saw Gerald Gaffer, and I have not seen him since 75. And I remember when the Boys Club was right across from La, La Cita in a crime infested area. Gerald used to take us on his own time on Saturdays and Sundays to tournaments in Brownsville. You know, he would spend out of his pocket to keep us fed. This is a long time ago where I was growing up in Fair Park, a crime infested area. I could have either been a gangster, right. but because of Gerald and his time and commitment, I am standing here today before you a successful businessman, a father, and hopefully a husband, right, you agree? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything that comes up for the Boys Club, there should not be any opposition to it. I mean, you know, it's cheaper to pay for the Boys Club than it is to incarcerate young men. We can all agree on that. Chief, I mean, you're here. You know, it's cheaper. I mean, it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to incarcerate them versus allowing any dollars that y'all can see it in your heart to give them. Gerald deserves the keys to the city of Harlingen if he has not already been given them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Anyone else, Mr. Lippich? Please state your name and address. Robert Lippich, 909 New Park. Just a couple things. I think uh, Frank uh, Morales, I think you have really perfect idea. Those lights need to be funded by the 4B money. I mean, that's a quality of life fund, and we're already doing millions of dollars for parks, and if we can't get lights out of the 4B board, then that, that's, that's sad, and especially when that money could be used for some other uh, aspect of what we're trying to do here tonight with the CCB. And just remember, I just, I know that you, 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 you like to emphasize on staff, but your elected officials are the ones that talk to the citizens out in the community, and they get input as well. And I appreciate everybody on the board. I appreciate staff, but it's, it's a partnership. I mean, everybody has ears to the ground, and I think everybody's opinion ought to be respected. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Martinez. Hi. Hi, too. Name uh, one more time. Oh, Desi. Desi Martinez, 1806 Haverford. Uh, I too 
support Boise Brown Club. I too we support the Victor Park Commission. I live right next to it. Uh, we, I raised my girls at Bill Elementary. My teacher, my wife is a teacher. Come on, we, we raise our kids in the neighborhood. We had Napatica at Boise Girls Club. So. The point is this. Where's that money coming from? Being a professional government and community developer and economic developer, we voted two decades, a decade ago, you know that people, you were here, that we voted for the 4B, we called it the Harlington Improvements Community Board. They have approximately $1.4 million for quality of life. We funded the Splash Park with that quality of life. Okay, that's a 4B sales tax. This 4B sales tax has gone up because Sam's came into town and we become a regional economic little boom town. Pick it up, up to double in times in terms of retail sales because of Sam's. Not Bass Pro, Sam's. I was there, so I don't know the history. But, but bottom line is this. I'm not against, like I, I know I'm in this for a long time, I'm not against parks. The kids need it. It's how we use our funding that we have, and this funding is for blight, the renewal of blight, and it's kind of pretty tough to go here, but uh, if you look at the government policy, I've been a former uh, EDC director for the city of Brownsville for several years, uh, in year one, two, and three, when this started, for multi-million dollar projects, it re allows the eligible projects for the removal of blight for low-income areas at urgent needs. Now you tell me, if we don't have a safety issue as to what just happened in the body. We can't expect the government to do everything for us. You are government. But we need to do our local share of what had just happened in the valley, and that's safety. And it starts safety with this money, because that's all you have for the low-income areas, low-income areas. It starts right here from the sidewalks out at our schools. I know the park is great. In fact, it's overused. Victor Park is saturated. And they want to put another field. We're going to have a green area. The kids also need green areas for Easter, so they have a secret yeah, Easter hunt and things like that. So come on, we got to reassess, retweet, and, and do the Jones. right funding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Anyone else? Mr. Mismar made a comment about staff, and I don't know if he has a gumption or courage in particular, but he wouldn't withdraw his appointee to the community development block grant because he makes those appointments. So we also have an incoming city commissioner who is the president of that. And he can tell you because he can have <laughs> the video, the Boys and Girls Club has a surplus. And that's what the members decided, that Mesmar appointed and the rest of them, the commissioners that are sitting with him. So if you don't care about your advisory boards, like the airport board or the Economic Development Corporation, don't appoint anybody. That's the same kind of logic about your crossing, Allen's crossing, and, and the other. Stay on point, Mr. Lozano. Yes, well, I just want him, he's smiling. I want him to understand that those kind of analogies can now come back and haunt you. So I was at that meeting for the entire duration of that. There was a full-blown discussion by the members, and that's how they arrived. Boys and Girls Club got over 50% of what they requested. And it's like was said earlier, there's a certain cap. Gabe indicated that they had little time to work with it. So you got a cap, and you have to make decisions. Your board members made the decisions. And they had political courage. Hopefully, you all have some, too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm not in trouble. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I'm George McShann, 1401 Oak Court. And um, it's great to be here. 
I just want to let you all know that I've been on the Boys and Girls Club board for 42 years. Uh, came a year after Gerald. And I can tell you a lot of history about um, what happened historically with the Boys and Girls Club. The collaboration with the school district, which I served 30 years on the board. The, the uh, <clears throat> satellites we have, Boys and Girls, Boys and Girls Club at, uh, at uh, Le Moyne Gardens, Bonita Park, and also Los Vecinos, and also out at, uh, excuse me, at Wilson. Um, I'll say this to you. Um, it's important to invest, and I'm, invest in our most priceless and precious possession. Thank you. And that's our children, okay? The CDBG uh, board is an advisory. It's an advisory committee. The co commissioners make that decision. It's in your hands. I do not participate in the um, deliberations of the, of the Boys and Girls Club allocation because I'm a mem <coughs> member of CDBG and, and excuse me. <clears throat> so I have a conflict. Mr. Lozano, you're out of order. So, so I didn't participate in it, but I just want to let you know that it's important. It's important to me. And many of you know how I feel about children in this school district, in this city. Invest in children. It's very important. It's very important to me. And I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but you know where I stand. And I know that you're going to have the courage to make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you. We'll close the, the public hearing, and I, I think we need to I'd like to allocate. make a motion yes. to allocate, uh, keep 78000 with the Victor Park lighting, Give seventy-eight thousand to clearance and demolition code compliance, and seventy-eight thousand to the housing rehab program, fourteen A. And, and just so, you, again, the reason I'm not moving any funds over to the Boys and Girls Club is it's not if, because it's under the under the 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 guidelines. You're already maxed out, so it's not like I don't want to give you the money. I I agree with Commissioner Oribe but because we have to stay within the parameters of that per certain percentage, we can't change those numbers. So I saw fit to put, divide that up into three, which will give actually Vestal Park, or Victor Park, the 78,000, you still have Vestal Park with their 65. And again, I, I just, I really would can, like can, to see code and compliance. Oh, you know what, that I, was a motion, <laughs> sorry. Well, I'll, I'll second that motion contingent upon uh, you find uh, the $27,000 on a general fund to uh, fully fund their request at the Boys and Girls Club. $27,000 on, on the general fund. I don't fund. think you can second no, we, we, that way. It, the motion is, is the motion, and then we can second that unless there's a motion that yeah. addresses that. But Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Puente's motion is just up. allocating the three. Uh, the 78 mm -hmm. to those three categories. Well, no. Yes. All right, question. But, Question for Frank, if I may. You said the two hundred and thirty-four thousand. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? And yes. you d you said it was seventy-eight thousand each. No. No. It's, I, I, I'm sorry. It's two hundred and thirty-four. I wanted to divide that up into divide by, by three, three equals which is seventy-eight. What, no. Seventy-eight thousand. Well, I come up with like seventy-four thousand and change, and I did it by hand. Oh, I could be wrong. Two thirty-four divided by three is seventy-eight thousand. Oh, you were? Cool. Yeah, it's 78000 It's 78000 Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> and then, so that's my motion. So, so, so 78000 for question. the yes. lighting at Victor four. Park and 78000 for housing rehab, and four, I didn't catch four, the... Uh, uh, the 04 clearance and demolition, okay. which would go to our code code compliance. Okay. Do, do we have a second? You can I ask a question? Can I ask you to amend your... Can he, can he add it to that? Can you add uh, 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 to your motion to find $27,000 on the general no. fund for the Boys and Girls? No, we can't because this is CDBG monies. Exactly. What we'd have to do is right. in another, right. yeah, yeah, another, we can always go to the general fund outside of CDBG and see if we can find them that money. 
So I'd like to keep my motion. But, no. So, so there's a motion on the floor. Yes, there's been, a, there's been a request that he amend the motion. He's rejected the amendment and it, it wants to present the motion as he's presented it. And is, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. The sales. The three? I don't know. Three opposed? Three, yeah. No, two opposed. No, three opposed. Who opposed? No. Rainey, Mr. Morales, and myself. I didn't even hear what we were voting on. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear. I heard uh, Commissioner Morales and, and Uribe. Uh, I, I thought Mr. Rainey uh, opposed. See, I heard it. Can can you, I haven't voted. I didn't vote yet. Oh, well, that's what? the reason I haven't voted yet. But uh, Commissioner Puente, hear. can you can you um, can you repeat, okay. repeat your, your motion? Your motion. Yeah, because you're mixing it up. Say again. It's the same. <laughs> no, no. Same the, the confusion is I asked him to amend the motion and he did to include to try to find the, the money for the Boys and Girls Club out of general fund. Not out of not of, not none of this. I'm right. agreeing with that. So I just want to make a directive to the staff to go find that money for the Boys and Girls. So if we approve it, we're getting the twenty-seven thousand. No. No, no. He 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 rejected that. So the fact that he rejected that, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, 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 no. Let me let me just clarify something real quick. I'm not necessarily rejecting it. I'm saying you we can still. Like the boys and girls. No, listen. This is CDBG money. We can yes. still go. We can still go later on, and ask for the twenty-seven thousand yes. that you're looking for. You we can't that, find it. We can't. Right now, you cannot make it. You can't do that because no, these can't. are. This is federal money. Right. So if do you we, want oh, general we can't funds, touch we have it. to do it at another time. But I'm not saying let's. Well, the incoming you people like come in and make that suggestion, like you're saying, or you find them find them the 27,000 in the general fund at another meeting you can request that okay. tonight has to do with yes, CDG federal yes. monies so my motion is again taking the 234 divided by 3 it's 78,000 we leave 78,000 in Victor Park lighting 78,000 will go to code enforcement which we desperately need to clean up our neighborhoods clearance and demolition yeah i'm sorry uh, yes clearance and demolition and 78,000 going into the housing rehab that we need to spruce up some of the, the low income areas. And Aye. we had a second. Okay. 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 So All right. Carries. So motion Three carries. Two. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, item number 12 public hearing in action to approve a substantial amendment to the city. City of Harlingen's 2019 to 2021 year action plan of the CDBG funding in the amount of 153,200. Ms. Cavazos. This is going to be for Vestal Park, correct? This is a substantial amendment. Uh, <coughs> there's, there's three. This okay. is uh, CV money, okay. the COVID. Oh, okay. The city of uh, Harlingen proposes to reallocate funds from program year 45 which is 2019-2020 CDBG CV round one funds in the amount of 100,000 from the health services activity to the financial hardship program, uh, an existing activity. And to eliminate the personnel protection equipment activity from program year 45, 2019-2020 CDBG CV round one okay. funds and reallocate the amount of 50,000 to the financial hardship program, an existing activity and to eliminate the public services activity from program year 45, 2019-2020, CDBG CV, round one funds, and reallocate the amount of 3,200 to the financial hardship program, an existing activity. A public notice was published in the Valley Morning Star on May 20th, 2022. The comment period started on May 21st, uh, 2022, and will end on June 21st, 2022. There were no comments received during the public hearing on May 23rd, 2022. The Community Development Advisory Board uh, recommends approval of this substantial amendment. In question then, so this will all comply with the federal laws in which we originally received this money? I'm, I'm sorry. I said yeah, so the th yeah. this will comply with all the federal laws yes, in sir. which we... Yes, sir. Okay. We have to have a substantial amendment. That's good. That's all I care about. <clears throat> Is there any questions? Okay, thank you. We are um, moving to the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against? Having heard no one um, here to speak, I will ask the uh, city attorney to 
No, I'm sorry. Nope. It's it's a long day. Sorry. Um, staff recommends approval, uh, yes. Mayor. Make staff a recommends approval. I'll make so a, motion a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Sorry, that Ms. Cavazos. <laughs> um, item number 13, public hearing in action to approve a substantial amendment to the City of Harlingen's 2021-2022 one-year action plan in the amount of 114607 This substantial amendment is required to eliminate an existing activity and add a new activity to the 2021-2022 one-year action plan as follows. The City of Harlingen proposes to eliminate the Parks and Recreation Facilities Harlingen Sports Complex Activity and add the Parks and Recreation Facilities Vestal Park Improvements Activity in the amount of 114607 A public notice was posted in the Valley Morning Star on May 20th, 2022. The public comment period started on May 21st, 2022 and will end on June 21st, 2022. There were no comments during the public hearing held on May 23rd, 2022. Excuse me. The Community Development Advisory Board recommends approval of this substantial amendment. Same question, so this will comply with all the yes, federal sir. rules and regs in which we received the money originally. Correct. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. We have a public hearing. Oh, sorry. So. Um, we'll now move to the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak for or against? Okay, no one is here, so now um, we have a motion? Yes, motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Cavazos. Item number 14, consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading amending the City of Harlingen Ordinance number 2022-09 in part and amending section 40-133 of Chapter 40 of the Harlingen City Code is amended to remove the requirement that streets have existing curb and gutters to qualify for the placement, alteration, or removal of speed humps. Mr. Cook. Uh, this is the commissioner's um, yes. item. Yes, I asked to uh, get this put on there because my, uh, uh, as of right now, we amended the speed hump ordinance uh, uh, what, two months ago, three months ago? Uh, three months ago, yes. About three months ago, or more or less, because I wanted to make it a little bit easier for some of the streets in my district that have been wanting um, to get speed humps, but some of the, the requirements were, in my opinion, unrealistic. So we, lower, we, we lowered the, the requirements. But at the same time, my area in District 5, a lot of it is... I'm not going to say rural, but it, it's a lot of it is, you know, it's not subdivision. Um, you have long streets that don't have um, the curb and gutter. And because of the curb and gutter, there's, they're, they're not um, able to get um, speed humps. And I've received a lot of, of requests from different um, constituents of mine that want speed humps. And I've submitted some um, to get speed humps, but they get them not automatically because um, they don't have... Um, Curb and gutter, and I reached out to to Craig, and I also reached out to to the um, um, the enge our city engineer, and I was asking like, what's the purpose of that? And then um, um, f basically, the reason they want the curb and gutter so that way the cars can't go around it, kind of thing. That was one of the reasons, correct, Craig? That's right. The, we don't want them to avoid the speed hump by going down into the ditch to go around it. Yeah, and then the thing is, like what he said, a lot of my the thing is, though, a lot of the streets in my in my district they already have the the ditches. So if they were to go around it, they'd fall into the ditch. So that's not something that you know most people would actually kind of do. And and it I just and it's just frustrating that because of that little requirement, that's um, requ um, automatically disqualifying a lot of the streets in my district specifically. Because like I said, mine is more I guess rural area of the of the city. So I want to be able to remove this so that way I can bring some speed humps um, to some of the neighborhoods or areas in my in my district that have asked for it. And again, this is going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not going to be like, oh, you know, it's party time. Let's just throw the speed humps. But I just want m more of the streets in my district to be able to hopefully um, be able to get the speed humps. They're still going to have to meet all the other qualifications, but they just don't need to have the curb and gutter. Motion to approve. Did you ask the chief uh, his thoughts on the safety requirement about that? Because... I said during daytime, you know, be a problem, but at night, you know, people, a young kid driving home and maybe drive, uh, goes off to the right or to avoid it. I don't know. Uh, Chief. I mean, did you, did you? 
We are doing it now, Commissioner Uribe. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Just I'd ask Good point. Questions. Good point. I just need to see my son drive this one. Good evening. Good evening. Just uh, brief thoughts on it. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure that's the purpose of the curb and gutter part of it, but you, your point is exactly right. And there's a lot of areas around town that don't have that. So in order to have the, the uh, speed humps, there could be some issues. I don't think it would be that many. And I think once they're there, people will get used to them. And they're not going to be going around them. That's just my thoughts offhand. Okay. Thank you, Chief. So you're saying there's a chance? We have a motion. You have a motion? A second. I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> item number 15 discussion and possible action to solicit requests for proposals to perform a needs assessment regarding personnel qualifications and procedures for establishing. Compensation increases for all city departments. And so I, I put this on the agenda because I want to ensure that the city of Harlingen is staffed um, in each department to ensure that we have enough people for each department and to ensure that we have a plan in place on how we are increasing compensation so we ensure that all our employees are, are being considered for increases in their in their pay and to ensure that they're fair and so this is the purpose that I put this on the agenda and this is just to solicit the proposals and then they would come in uh, staff would do that and then they would come to the Commission to present and and the the public could could take you know to participate or, or to at least be able to hear what they have to say on um, what they're what they will do for the city of Harlingen we can do that um, We'll go out for proposals and get some companies to come in, and then we'll give them to the council too. So you can wreck them yourselves. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Do you don't need a motion, right? Yes, we do. Oh, motion to solicit Second. proposals. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. And item number sixteen: board appointments. I have uh, Mike Gonzalez to the community improvement board. Okay. I have none, Mayor. I have one on the airport board I have seat seven and I would like to because it's a new thing on the so do I there's someone there right now so do I have to remove them first and then put them on or just correct okay then I make a motion well I would like to remove uh, mr. Rubiano from seat seven on the airport board and then I would like to appoint um, Juan Longoria to replace him I think you have to do one at a time right? okay Mark? No. okay so I make a motion to remove mr. Rubiano from the airport board Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, now I make a motion to appoint Juan Longoria to the airport board in seat seven. Okay. Second. And we also have um, Mr. Mike, Mike Gonzalez. Mike, Mike, Mike Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Mike Gonzalez to the community improvement board. And I do have some appointments. I have for Healthy Harlingen. Um, Are you putting me on a board? Oh, Healthy sorry, Harlingen, we have Roger Mesa, um, the Harlingen Housing Authority, uh, Irma Peña, and Bettina Elliott. I have one more. I, I almost forgot. On the Veteran Advisory Board, I was going to uh, replace, well, make a motion to replace Martin Bo Martin Borjas, and I was going to replace him with. Um, Is it an expired term? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Segura. Segura. Um, Javier. Um, Ruben, Javier. Yes, Javier, Javier Segura. Segura. Yes. Um, I think we're gonna we're checking as far as the qualifications on that, sir, just to make sure that he's a Harlington resident. Oh, okay, okay. So hold okay. off on that one. Yeah. Um, well, you can appoint you can him, but now. yeah, you can appoint him. But if we come back and we tell you that he doesn't meet, I just take him up. off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then I'll appoint him now. So. Okay. Were, were you gonna remove somebody first? Yeah, you're gonna make the motion. Okay. He did. Go ahead. Make a motion to remove uh, Martin Borjas from the Veteran Advisory Board. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, um, board appointments. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. You want me to say all mine again? Yes. <laughs> no. We have every we okay. have um, Mr. Gonzalez. Mike uh, Mike Gonzalez through the three board. 
Okay. And then you got Juan Lagoria for the airport board, correct? Okay. Yes. And then, uh, uh, then uh, Mr. Javier Segura for the <coughs> advisory board. Second. And then for the mayor's appointment? I have um, Roger Mesa for Healthy Harlingen and the Harlingen Housing Authority, Irma Peña and Bettina Elliott. What was the last one, Christina? Bettina, Bettina, Bettina. Elliott. Do you have a motion? Yeah. And a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Are we okay. um, where are we? Huh? What is it? <laughs> All right. Um, item number 17 is um, to go into executive uh, session to deliberate regarding the purchase or exchange lease or value of real property pursuant to the Texas Government Code 551.072. Do we have a motion to go into executive so session? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go into executive session and we will be back shortly. We are back in session. It is 8.10 p.m. Um, after, dis after being in executive session, and we are now at um, item number 18, discussion and possible action regarding the executive session item pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.072. And, and we're just not going to take any action uh, on this item. We're going to pass on it. Thank you all for bearing with us, and everybody have a good evening. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.